Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Math 30-3, Chapter 4, Section 1, Experimental Probability, Part 1. Now, the outcomes we're going to meet today are 1.1, Describe and Explain the Applications of Probability. 2, Calculate the Probability of an Event Based on a Data Set. And 3, Express a Given Probability as a Fraction, Decimal, Percent, and in a Statement. First thing we got to do is re review. The first thing we have to do is review fractions. So, in this section, you'll need to simplify fractions. So, 39 over 117. I have no idea in freak. I mean, I could probably do it. I'm just, but I'm just lazy. So I'm going to grab Mr. Calculator because it does all this for me, which is why I told you to get one of these nice ones. So, clear. 39 divided by 117. 3.33333 math fraction enter and there we go one third so this simplifies to one over three that's what I need to be able to do with these nice fancy calculators that you're supposed to have and let's look at 32 over 48 now I think I can do that in my head but I'm too lazy that comes up 0.66667 math fraction two thirds That's what I need to be able to do. All right, now, here's three of them here. I'm going to shut up. Sorry, I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys to do them. We'll come back and compare results, okay? So do it. Okay, welcome back. I got five eighths, four sevenths, and three sevenths. If you didn't, well, go back and check your work because that's how it goes. Put the number in. 675. Divided by 1575 gives me 0 0.428.7514, blah, 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 blah. Math? You want me to turn to a fraction? Yes, I do. Hit enter again, and three sevens. That's what I need you to be able to do. That used to be a big deal before we had graphing calculators. Now, if you can do that, and I expect you to be able to, then the rest of this is pretty straightforward. Now, fractions, decimals, and percentages. When we're doing probability, there's... Lots of ways we can give you the answer. A fraction, a decimal, and a percent. So here I want you to complete the following table showing your equivalent value for the fractions, decimals, and percentages. So grab Mr. Calculator. The very first one, one-fifth. One divided by five equals 0 0.2. So a decimal, that's 0 0.2. Now, as a percent, remember means of 100. So you multiply that by 100 and you get 20%. All right. That's what I need to be able to do. Now, some of these I can do pretty readily. 0.7 times 100 should be, should be 70%. I'm going to double check because I'm getting old. 0.7 times 100 equals Point, sorry, point 0.7 times 100, the other divide by 70. Now, can we turn 70 in, uh, point 0.7 into a decimal? Yes. That should be 7 out of 10. Point 0.7 math fraction. Ooh, I can still do some of this math in my head. I'm not that old. Shut up. I heard that. All right, so let's do the same thing here. 12%. Now, to go from percentage to decimal, you divide by 100. <sighs> Sorry. 12 divided by 100, not 10. Because I'm in you menu and I meant that. 0.12. Now, turn that into a fraction. Now, answer. Enter. Math. Fraction. 3 25ths. Now, that's 12 out of 100, which simplifies to 3 over 25. Mr. Calculator will do that simplification for you. I don't care which one you use, as long as you give me one of them. Now, there's four more here. I'm going to pause the recording. I want you to, to uh, do all of them. I suggest uh, turn everything into a decimal, and then decimal to fraction, fraction, uh, sorry, decimal to percentage. Anyway. Gonna pause the recording. 
All right, so here goes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Point eight nine becomes eighty nine percent. You multiply by a hundred, and you turn that into a fraction. That's eighty nine divided by a hundred. And no, Mr. Calculator. Well, hang on, let me double check. I did that in my head. Eighty nine divided by one hundred. Point eight nine math fraction doesn't simplify. So 89 out of 100 is as simple as it gets. The next one, 2 out of 37. I got, oh, you Wiener schnitzel. People are watching, stop that. 2 out of 37 became 0. When I divide that, that was 0 0.054, something, something, something. Multiply that by 100, you get 5.4%. 0 0.03, divide that by 100 is 3%. Now, 0 0.03 is 3 out of 100, and you can't simplify that anymore. 45% is 0.45. Turn that into a fraction. You get 45 out of 100. Mr. Calculator will simplify to that to 9 twentieths. That's what I need you to be able to do. Okay? Any questions? Well, I hope not. Now, I'd like to think that's fairly straightforward with Mr. Calculator. You need all of this fraction, decimal, and percentage for the next part, experimental probability. Now, experimental probability is the probability received when actually doing the trial. For example, flipping a coin six times and getting heads four times and tails twice. Now, that differs from theoretical probability. Now, theoretical probability is the chance of an event happening expressed as a percentage fraction decimal or in words. Now, remember, sorry, for example, if a coin is flipped six times, since the theoretical probability is 50-50, then you should get heads three times and tails three times. Should. All right? Where was I? Yeah, so, yes, you should. That's in theory. But experimental or reality is what happens when we actually do it. Okay? And we're going to deal with experimental probability today. Next lesson is theoretical. Now, let me give you some examples. You may have heard expressions like this. Eight out of ten veterinarians recommend a certain brand of pet food. 70% chance of rain today. Now, these are expressions of probability. Probability is a prediction of how likely that a particular event will happen. The formula for calculating probability, P of event A, is the number of occurrences of event A divided by the total number of possible outcomes. And yes, I'm speaking in language math. Let me give you, let me explain a little bit. Probability is expressed in the lowest terms. Now, experimental probability is calculated based on measuring occurrences of A in a sample data set or running a trial to find out how many times A occurs. Using the results of the sample or trial can allow you to make predictions about the likelihood of future occurrences. Actually, let me just give you an example. It'll be easier. I'm trying to explain this. Georgina bought a bag of candies. She noted that 15 were red, 10 were green, 12 were purple, and 13 were orange. Question A. Calculate the probability of a randomly chosen candy from the bag being red. Express the probability as a fraction, a decimal, a percentage, and in words. So, if you bought a bag of M&Ms or whatever, Skittles or something, Smarties, she grabs one. What's the probability of it being red? Well, Probability of red, number red, over total. So how many red how many red candies were in the bag? Uh, Fifteen were red. What's the total? Well, the total: fifteen red, ten green, twelve purple, thirteen were orange. So fifteen total. 15 plus 10 plus 12 plus 13, 15, 25, 30, 50. I think that's 50. Check my math for me. So there we go. The probability of her choosing a red candy just by randomly is 15 out of 50. So that's a fraction. Now, I don't think that's the simplest fraction. I'm going to double check. 15 divided by 50 is 
0 0.3 math fraction 3 tenths. Excuse me. So that's 3 out of 10. So that's a fraction. And you'll notice Mr. Calculated did that as a decimal, 0 0.3. Okay. Now, as a percentage, that's times 130. So that's 30%. And as words, ah, how do I put that in words? A 30% chance, a 3 in 10 chance. Words, words, words. 3 in 10 probability. Choosing a red. Of randomly choosing. Okay. I want to stress that because she's reaching in and randomly grabbing one. And this is important because if she does it three, ten times, three times she'll get a red candy. Now that's experimental probability. Okay? So, and I'm going to pause there to look at this and we're going to go on to the next questions, next examples. Okay? Okay.